Hello and welcome back to the Vintage Unicorn Beauty Makeup Etc. I am Emma and I apologize that I haven't been here in a week. So I tried to make up for it by doing two in one. This is a science fiction double feature going on. The first little bit of the video is a little bit of a stringing eyebrows tutorial and then the rest is this look here which I must say I kind of like it, you know? Some, it may look kind of basic, like a big old sloppy wing, some la lashes and a pink eye, but I think I did some kind of cool trickery in here. You'll only know if you watch the video though. Anyway, thank you so much again. Please consider subscribing and check out my Instagram because I will be shooting the pictures of me and this gown with this look. So I will see you on this side of the video. All right, so now I have my little loop again. I'm going once and twice and I want to make sure that that I guess knot is far away from that middle piece and as you can see it moves and it will trap anything that gets in its way oh and right now I'm being a little bit less ferocious than I usually would be because I'm down to the very last hairs on the eyebrow that got something big. I could feel it yank it out and let's look at the string. This is the fun part is when you look at the string and you're like, oh, there's a gigantic hair on it. It's just cool. Maybe that's why I prefer it. Cause like tweezing, you know, you're pulling it out, but the stringing thing is just interesting. Now, I don't know why this one hair will not come up. I don't know if I maybe accidentally glued it down with like foundation or something, but I am just going to push it up and then lay it down almost flat and we're gonna go after it again and it's gone I can see it there is a new one now that I see this little flat guy right here and he's growing at a funny angle so I'm gonna brush that hair up and yank it out and there's another pretty dark one right there that I really want to yank Sometimes you have to get really up into your eye and you can do this all across the lid. You'd be surprised where hair grows on your eyelids. So I'm going to do a little bit more near my tail. I don't want to get my tail. I just want to clean up the areas that are closer to my lash line in the general makeup area. So looking at the finished product, there is still that one big guy. He just will not come out, huh? So I'm just going to aggressively keep going at it a couple times and I will know when I get it. Whew, pulled it. Uh, it was pretty big, but I don't think that was the one. There it went. All right. I am pretty happy with that. So as you can see, that is actually not a hair I am realizing. It is a dent of some kind in my face. I just want to clean up a few more little ones that are lower down and show you guys the string. If you can see that, maybe if I put it against a dark background, there are a bunch of little hairs, little fuzzies all trapped around it. So I am now going to match the other side and we will get on to the actual makeup tutorial and I need to give my eyebrow a little, oh, it feels so smooth. Give it a little bit of time to calm down. All right, so I really want to do a pink eye with a super graphic liner. I might be setting myself up for failure, but we will see. I'm going to be jumping right into my Creepy Cute palette, and any pink shadow will work. I just really like the strawberry milkshake from this, and I want to, my mirror is like super in the way of my brushes just the whole setup I've got here. And I wanna pull out my 506. This is a great blending brush. It is small. I think that I've noticed a trend in makeup brushes that they are going smaller. And even though that does take a little bit more time, you can, what I call pixel by pixel, going in and actually, you know, getting every little detail. So I'm gonna swivel around in that strawberry milk. Initially, I wasn't super impressed with these, but after playing with them, I've worn them a couple times. I am very happy with them. So I just want to start buffing that in over the lid, just barely over the crease because I wanna highlight that brow using a shimmer, but I want there to be a nice pink foundation. And I'm gonna continue packing that on until it's visibly pink. I don't want it like pow, but this is a pretty neutral tone pink and I just want to get that all over the eye.
All right, so it's now at a pretty good opacity, and what I want to do is pull out an oldie but goodie. This is the D'Antoinette by Lime Crime, and it is a very neon palette, but it's mostly shimmers. So what I've done is I've gone in onto that pink, and I want to focus that on the inner corner just a little bit, and kind of buff it out. It's gonna add a little bit of shimmer and pop over the creepy cute because I know this looks like super pink when I'm putting it on. It's actually not by itself. It's because there is a pink foundation under it. So again, I'm gonna do likewise on the other eye, going really deep into that tear duct area, pulling it on the inside and then blending it across. And this palette has all the colors I want to play with. And another thing I can do, because this I got a little lost, I can use it to carve out that lid space and clean up. So the next thing I'm going to do, same brush, I'm just going to rotate it, is go into the purple on the D'Antoinette palette. And I am going to just gently incorporate that into the purple I've already created. I don't want the purple to be too there. I want that to be just there to accentuate the crease. And I will buff that into oblivion shortly, but for now, I just wanna add a little bit of this more fluorescent purple. And that's actually really pretty. I might add a little bit on the lower lash line just to darken that up. All right, now what I'm going to do again is switch to the 506 and I am going to start blending this and kind of trying to assimilate it into my skin so that it's almost, you know, an, an illusion that there is a darker area. Another cool thing about if you ever decide to use a single color on your entire eye, your natural facial geometry and structure will allow for, you know, some more depth in this area because a bone is prominent right here and there is a absent space right here in the socket so you can rely on that with a single color and I did that with my thirsty palette with the yellow and I was actually surprised at how multi-dimensional it was able to be with only one color I think I actually did use a little bit of transition shade but definitely not enough to add a super contoured eye I think Kat Von D was very revolutionary in her you know, it wasn't a new concept, but the way that she presented it with the shade and light palette saying, look, you can contour your eyes just like you can contour your face. I actually remember when contouring wasn't really a thing and I was watching like QVC or something and it was actually Laura Geller who came on with a contour kit and it was like $45 and I was what, 16, 17 at the time and I didn't want to spend that. So I started looking for contouring. I couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't realize that bronzing, the bronzer was the same thing. Anyway, so I'm moving on in the Dantonette palette to this silver right here. I understand most people will probably not have this palette, but these are fairly common shades. And I just want to illuminate that brow bone now that it has at least less hair. Actually, it has almost no hair left on it. It has little bumps from where the hair was. And then just make sure that that purple doesn't have a harsh line against that beautiful silver color. And I just want, you know, a whimsical fairy effect. I'm just going to continue blending and applying until I have reached that. I'm also going to add it in the tear duct and then we're going to get on to the graphic liner part. So now I want to move on while my, I want my uh, eyeshadow to be, you know, fully set and filled in and just kind of in my pores, whatever, uh, before I start the graphic liner. But what I do want to do is add some tone and dimension to my face. So I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be contouring and highlighting, and I'm actually going to be doing a very bold move highlighting wise, or I'm sorry, contouring wise. I am taking, this is just a large angled brush, and this is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil, and I am going to coat the brush and very, very carefully, in fact, I'm doing this in the mirror, I want to line up where I want my nose to be contoured and very quickly pull down. This is a warm, I'm sorry, a very cool tone highlighter. <laughs> this is a cool tone contour and I don't want it to turn too red. So I am going to help it just a little bit. So now that I have those lines in place, I know they look a little garish right now, but I want to take my regular contour brush, which should be right here, and just start to kind of buff that with the very tip of this little brush. 
and blend it down and even up into the brow bone just so that it isn't so much of a straight line. I definitely want it to be a line, but I don't want it to be all that straight. Now what I wanna do is I'm taking this flesh stick again and I'm going to draw just a little bit, a couple dots down my nose and on the tippy tip there and a little bit right about here. Then I'm going to again do so on my cheekbone and I'm going to blend that in with a beauty blender. I am also going to use my contour just about right here. The liquid eyeliner wise, I absolutely swear by Lottie London. I, I mean, Kat Von D makes some awesome eyeliner, but it skips, it dries out. This has been the same one I've been using for about two months now, and it is still on point. So I just wanna draw on the band of my liner, starting very deep in the tear duct, and start pulling it across gently, and then filling it in. So that way I have equal bands on both sides. So my transformation to goth queen seems to be almost complete. I completed my eyeliner with a very huge wing and applied Shady Lane Lashes from Sugar Pill. Then Exorcism by Kat Von D on the lips. Now I have this theory brewing that lips are the new eyes. So I'm definitely gonna be coming a little bit more adventurous with lips, going outside of the normal pink, brown kind of genre and to begin I want to try that right now so I have this color double dare in the actual uh, studded kiss lipstick and I want to try just accentuating and contouring my lips I think contouring is just going crazy eyes face you name it we're contouring it so I'm just going to take the tiniest little bit and almost like a Queen Amidala vibe and what's cool is I don't have to move my lip rings. And that just added, I think, a little bit of extra dimension. And made my lips look a little bigger. And it really didn't do very much. I only added a tiny little bit in this uh, Double Dare color. But man, mwah. I like it. <laughs> I The last thing I want to do is I want to amp up the intensity of my highlighter. And the Too Faced highlighter is a really great highlighter. It's just not blinding, which seems to be like the trend right now. So I thought of actually doing something a little crazy. I don't know if it will work. I'm going to take my Japanese sponge and really see if I can get some on there. Actually, like, urgh, there it goes. And there is a good amount on there. And I'm going to see what this... Hello. All right. I don't know if anyone knows about this, if anyone's ever done this, but it's a thing. It's a very cool thing. I hope it didn't destroy my sponge though. Look at that. Sorry. I'm kind of like in love with myself right now. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, um, Consider subscribing if you're new. We, we are doing, we love to do giveaways. Jeffree Star is the next one. It is coming and I cannot wait until some Kat Von D stuff drops so I can start sending it out to you guys. Also, my Instagram information is below. I will actually be putting it in the video this time. Also linked in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.